okay. If we're talking about room correction, we have to talk about the room first. So what is what's the, the, the purpose of a room in a recording studio? First of all, we have to make clear that we're talking about professional listening environments. We're not talking about hi-fi, we're not talking about taste or whatever. We're looking about what I called acoustic control. And if we want to make sure that we know what's happening on the material, we need a somehow authentic reproduction of what's on the disc or wherever. And what is this authentic reproduction? If we can say that first of all, which comes to our mind, is a linear frequency response. So as linear, as flat as possible. Um, that's a frequency response of a mastering room in, in Switzerland. Um, if we have a close look at the frequency responses of different type of gears, um, this is um, the, 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 the black line is the amplifier, blue is a loudspeaker, red is a room. So that makes sure we have to take care about the loudspeakers and first of all we have to take care about the room to get a linear frequency response. Second, it's all about time. We want to have a reverb reverberation time which is as flat and as short as possible. No, not as short as possible maybe. This is a um, EBU, um, um, how you say, a tolerance area for a control room. And this special, this measured room here has a reverberation time which is pretty, pretty short. But as most of all, most of the rooms that we see, we have a much longer reverberation time in the low frequency range, which is because of not treated or not enough treated own modes or resonance frequencies. This reverberation time is not broadband, it's on, on mostly very small band, small band resonance frequencies because of the own modes of the room. So this is something we also need. We need a short and even reverberation time. And then we need a third, a reflection-free zone, which is that we don't want to listen to reflections. We want to listen to the direct sound coming from the loudspeakers on the listening position. Um, from these three subject, or from these three, three um, Anforderungen, um, there are many more, like stereo image or whatever. But from these three, the reflection-free zone and the short re reverberation time can never be achieved using a filter. So the only thing we can do using a filter is take care of our frequency response. So if we talk about correction of a room, which is not perfect, first of all, we need to talk about acoustic treatment. A filter is never a substitute for acoustic treatment. A filter is, all, is always the last step in the optimization process of a room. Everything we can do about room acoustic treatment is better than filtering. But in real life, we have limitations in volume, in money, in time, whatever. So a perfect room, I've never... Peter, have you, have you seen a perfect room in your life? Yes, okay. I have never seen a perfect room in my life. I always have something which is not right for me. One, yes, okay. So there's one room in the world, obviously, which is perfect. Um, so if we want to filter, if we're not happy with the room after all the acoustic treatment, or let's say if there is still some room for improvement, we can think about using a filter. Nowadays, a room correction filter is usually digital, which is, has a lot of, a lot of um, good things. Um, this is the, the uh, remote control software for a Conac filter, uh, a digital filter that we use from time to time. Uh, we have uh, almost unlimited bandpass filters and we can be very precise and we can... Some of these filters have the possibility of, of uh, generating the filter parameters by themselves by using a microphone. Very modern, very luxurious, very easy to use. This is the, the Conic, what it looks like. Another very popular filter is the Trinov, probably the best digital filter that we have nowadays. Uh, on the market does a lot more than just filtering, has some psychoacoustic effects as well. But we have to make sure 
or we have to be aware that every time we are using a filter, we have to live with side effects. One is, if we're using any analog filter or any IIR filter, which is a digital, the standard digital filter that we use in most, most uh, applications, we always have a change of phase or a phase distortion. So if I use a filter to do something on the level at 100 hertz, there will be a phase change at 100 hertz. If I do want it or not, I can't help it. It will happen. Um, the second thing is there, are, there is a type of filter which is called FIR filter, finite impulse response. And with this kind of filter technology, it's possible to create a filter which is which has a linear phase, so there's no phase change. I can just change the level without doing anything on the phase. The problem is that for this kind of filter, the filter has to know in advance which is happening. And so, as the filter is not able to look in the future, the filter has to delay the signal. So there's always a latency, a much bigger latency with this kind of filter than it is with analog filters or IIR filters. Um, in many applications, we don't care. If it's a mastering room, we don't really care if the, if, if, if it, if the record starts 100 milliseconds later. But if you're playing the piano on, the, um, on your MIDI keyboard, or if you're playing the guitar or whatever in your, in your control room, this can be a big problem. Or so if you're doing video, uh, audio for video. Um, and then, third, if we're using digital filters, we always need a conversion into the digital domain, ADDA. Um, we cannot use a digital filter when we have an analog signal. We cannot use a digital filter without. Um, I don't want to discuss about the quality of converter technology. Um, this kind of technology takes usually hours or days, and um, it's very, very rare that people agree after this kind of discussion. Um, but I think it is obvious that using a converter can do a lot on the sound. And there is a reason why people spend, I don't know, 3,000 euros or more on a stereo analog digital or digital analog converter. So as it does something on the, on the sound, and as we say, we are after uh, authentic reproduction, it is a disadvantage. OK. So we we thought it would be great to have an analog filter for correction of recording rooms. Um, nowadays, this is what the chain in the modern recording studio looks like. It's a digital audio workstation. I think almost everyone is working on, on with the DAW nowadays. Then we have a converter to put it on the analog domain. Usually, you have, you're using an um, analog monitor controller. I don't know one single studio which is working with a digital monitor controller. There are some, I know, but I've never been to one. And then after the analog monitor controller, it's going into the analog amplifier and the analog speaker. Again, there are speakers with digital inputs, but I don't know one single studio which is working completely on the digital domain. And then, exactly between monitor controller and amplifier would be the place to put a filter. So having an analog filter means that we can avoid one ADDA conversion process. Um, another way of working nowadays is analog summing, even if it's a, an old-fashioned uh, or modern analog recording desk, or if it's a dangerous music analog summing amp or whatever. If you're using analog summing and I think there is no point in using it digital or now, that's not real. Then there is a good, it's a good idea to talk about or to think about using an analog filter later on, if you're filtering at all. OK. Let's have a look at the Conic. There's one here. Um, so you're all invited to, to have a look and to, to ask me questions, whatever you, you want to ask, and, and, and to touch it and to use it. Um, there's also a demonstration workshop today and tomorrow in the Playroom Studios, uh, a big recording studio here in Frankfurt. So if you want to listen to it, you're invited to come with me to the Playroom Studios and take, take 
or to listen to the, to the sound in a proper recording studio control room. Um, the Cosinus was developed and is built by Roger Schult, which is uh, on the top left, RS. Roger Schult is a German developer for audio electronics, filter stuff and these kind of things. And he did, he built it for us, builds it for us, and he developed it for us. He's over there on the next booth. Um, the Cosinus has three band pass filters in two channels. Yes, so six overall. They are limited from 20 hertz to 240 hertz. So you're not able to do something at 1K with the, with the Cosinus. Because we think if there is a problem at 1K, you should check your speakers, and you should check your room, you should check your studio, your studio furniture, you should check your, your TFT display, whatever, but there's no point in filtering over there because you're doing something on the, f on the face. Yes, it's an analog EQ and you're doing something on, the, something on the face. So limited to 240 hertz. The big advantage is that with using an analog device, it's pretty, pretty hard to, to make sure that you're really, really using a filter at 37 hertz, not at 38 or 36 hertz. And as our, uh, the, the, the knob is zoomed from 20 to 240 hertz, it's much easier to get to the right frequency. And we also have two knobs for the frequency. One is like almost, and the other is a precise fine-tuning knob. So it's possible to be very precise with the filter. The first bandpass filter can be used as an X over. So you can use high pass, low pass. You can generate your signal for using a subwoofer system. You don't have to rely on what's in your subwoofer. You can do it on your, on your own. And you have a, f an, uh, a phase shifting unit over here. So you can use stereo subwoofers. And you can have a phase shift for your subwoofers. This is very important to make sure that on the, on the, the crossover frequency, the, gen, the um, satellites, the loudspeaker, and the subwoofer are in phase. And you don't, usually you have something like polarity on the, on the subwoofer, which is kind of a help, but not what we really want. OK. As every input and output is accessible via XLR on the back of the unit, you 